colonial America. Um, I'd have to say one of the best examples of colonial America today would be in Pennsylvania with the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. So if you're thinking that you want to get a good grasp on what colonial America might be, then go to Pennsylvania. Um, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to wear guinea sack dresses today. That's one thing that I think is better about um, now versus colonial America. But those. Now, okay, uh, the Boston Tea Party. I believe it happened in 1082. Uh, AD and no, that was just a joke. Um, it happened pre-Revolutionary War. It was in response to the king's tariffs, uh, not specifically on tea, but the fealty of tariffs, I believe. And the settlers, nay patriots, uh, decided to revolt by raiding the harbor and throwing goods from England into the harbor. A lot of which were tea. Um, okay. Is that 30 seconds? The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1976 by four people named Mark, Lucas, Joseph, and Giovanni. It was very important because it showed that the U.S. would not be the subject of another country. It was a very crucial moment in our nation's history. Okay, which one are we doing? The Revolutionary War, man. It was really fucked. Uh, this shit shouldn't have happened. George Washington and shit. Fuck, I hear his teeth are made out of wood, yo. <laughs> that ain't right. What's that about? <laughs> <laughs> the British are coming. The British are coming. <laughs> man. <laughs> So basically this old guy, he wanted to buy Louisiana because he really had nothing else to do. So after he bought Louisiana, he felt kind of bad about it and decided that he should sell it. But he couldn't sell the whole thing because people didn't like the way it was shaped. So he changed the shape of it into a boot to uh, entice people to buy it. And so then an old lady bought it because she thought the boot would be attractive. But basically she tried it on, it was a little too large. And after buying the boot and trying it on and finding it was too large, she sold it back to the old man. Okay, so the War of 1812, if I remember correctly, from the past few months of my uh, U.S. history class was between the Americans, the British, the Indians, the French, the Canadians, all kinds of people involved. It was like a border war because the Indians and the French wanted to keep their land west of the Mississippi and um, Britain didn't want them to because they wanted to keep control on uh, the United States. The Monroe Doctrine was named after uh, the president at the time, James Monroe. He was the uh, 12th president of the United States, and uh, whatever it said has been used uh, to some effect uh, good and bad uh, over the years. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt used it, uh, invoked it, that's right, invoked the Monroe Doctrine, and I think that uh, some other people, I'm not sure exactly what it said. In fact, I'm not even sure if there was an actual doctrine that exists like that they could pull out and show to people. It's just like a concept more, right? Kind of like uh, the war on terror a little bit. But I'm getting So basically, the Indian Removal Acts were when the Spanish took the Indians from India to Africa and made them work hard hours um, harvesting sugar and molasses and such things as caribou and elk. So the Indians rebelled and they killed 1,000 Indian, 1,000 Spanish. And this is the Indian Removal Act. The Civil War, I would have to be a northerner because I think everybody should have free rights. That's the way it should be. 
in the whole works. Uh, everybody's created equal in this world, and that's the way. It, that's the way I believe about it. The War of 1812. Uh, you're talking uh, as part of American freedom, you know, to the extent. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Spanish War. Now, if you're talking, you talk about the Alamo. Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. I well, the Spanish-American War is a lot like today, and Mark Twain, who was the, the founder of the Anti-Imperialist League, called it a huge injustice of one nation attacking another without a cause. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to learn from that what happens when we do that. Okay. All right, so the Depression was about about a thousand people or more, I don't know, and they got really fat because they ate everything and they got really depressed and um, I don't know, it just it just all went downhill from there and I don't know, they just ate everything inside. They just got so fat and I don't know what happened to them and so, I don't know, they just, I don't know, they just went out of control and they need to, they, thank God they stopped and so. Yeah, the Great Depression. Okay, I'm going to be talking about World War II. Um, I probably don't know as much as I should know about World War II, but my grandpa was in World War II. He fought in the South Pacific. He ended up getting a Purple Heart, which is really impressive because he uh, like saved other or he helped other soldiers. Um, he fought down there for four years, I think, three or four years, and um, I know it was really he. I know it was really hard times. Um, he. <laughs> um, he. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say. We cut this. I Post-war uh, America, North Korea, the Communist North invades the South, uh, 1950, uh, the United States uh, helps uh, South Korea, uh, brings massive forces, United Nations-led effort, uh, let's see, uh, 1953, they basically do the 38th parallel, which still stands to this day, and in fact, it's still not even, the war's not even officially over, it's just been declared a ceasefire. So. Ready, set, go. Um, the Cold War. It was in Germany, and uh, the Soviets. It was divided. Uh, something was divided. Berlin Wall. Yeah, the Berlin Wall, and there was the good half, and then the bad half, and we, and then like, <laughs> uh, better dead than red. That's a quote from the Cold War because the Soviets were red, right? And wasn't there a, re a race? Uh, yeah, in there's the, a race. Oh, the space? The space race? Yeah. Was that the Cold War? Yeah. Oh. It was leading up to the Cold War, wasn't it? Uh, I'm sure. And, uh, this is more Lucius than Lucius D. Seconds. Clay, he was the most powerful. Anyhow, the Cuban Missile Crisis, that was when uh, Khrushchev and his, his bunch with the, uh, his bunch of Polito Burroughs, they were trying to be slick with a bunch of missiles off in Cuba. <laughs> uh, I don't remember whether whether it's satellites or, or whether it was uh, reconnaissance flights, but one way or the other, we got wind of it, and Kennedy, Kennedy put a quash on that. <laughs> they uh, they kind of drug their feet there for a minute, but I don't remember what the exact details were. But Kennedy got the message across. <laughs> You want to talk about it now? Or? What? Do you mind talking about it now? Uh, sure. Okay. So basically, can you just summarize the events? Where? Long overdue. Uh, uh, you know, it's basic constitutional rights. Everybody has a right to be free. Okay. Any specifics? Um. No, not particularly. That, that's good, actually. 
<laughs> now we just need the napalm. Hell no, we won't go. Hell no, we won't go. Ah, uh, I don't know what to say. Let's see. Terrorism is bad. It's very bad. We need to find a way to get rid of it. Uh, we got to start in the countries across the seas there. Uh, I don't want to say anything too bad. I don't really know what I need to say here. Uh, Borat kind of convinced me that uh, the Jews were behind 9-11. But uh, I don't know if that's true or not. It's just a... Okay. In November, I wanted to make a documentary, but my mom wouldn't let me. So I had to sneak around and use this crappy digital camera that only takes 30-second MPEGs.